The U.S. Marine Corps has been testing yet another rifle squad organization as part of its reorganization effort. Task and Purpose recently reported that the new Marine littoral regiments specializing in maritime scouting and screening in the West Pacific will have an updated rifle squad suited to that task. In this episode, I'm going to talk about this prospective squad, and I'll also briefly cover Marine Corps concepts for littoral combat teams and expeditionary advanced base operations. But only briefly, subscribe to get notified when I do a full video on those topics. And if you like this video, consider joining our Patreon to keep Battle Order going. First, what is a littoral combat team? As per the Marine Corps' Force Design 2030, it plans on standing up at least three Marine littoral regiments in the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force 4 deployed to the Pacific. These MLRs will focus on operating in a contested maritime environment, which in real-world terms means water and small islands in the West Pacific that China can observe and hit. Their job will to be set up small expeditionary advanced bases with reinforced platoons, brought to shore in either future light amphibious warships or aviation. These bases will fulfill a variety of missions, such as arming and refueling F-35 Bravo fighters, monitoring the waters around them enabled by unmanned boats that extend their vision even further, and acting as firing points for anti-shipping missiles and air defense. If you're familiar with armored warfare, the MLRs would essentially be the Navy's equivalent to a cavalry, providing early warning forward and protecting the main force by making its outer reaches more dangerous for the enemy. One of the Marine Corps' first big coming-of-age missions was actually occupying advanced bases in support of naval operations during the Spanish-American War, so advanced basing in general isn't new. In terms of structure, MLRs will have a headquarters, Littoral Combat Team, Littoral Logistics Battalion, and a Littoral Anti-Air Battalion. Overall, relatively similar to a Marine Expeditionary Unit or MU, although with a bigger emphasis on long-range fires and aviation refueling and rearming. Like a MU's ground combat element, the Littoral Combat Team is based on a reinforced infantry battalion. But unlike a typical MU tasking, Expeditionary Advanced Basing will require far more independence and a lower profile to survive. One piece of the independence puzzle, then, is the organization of the small units, which is where the new rifle squads come in. The current rifle squad has 13 marines with a sergeant as squad leader. The remainder are split into three equally sized fire teams, each with a corporal team leader, and either lance corporals or privates first class as automatic riflemen, grenadier, and riflemen. All members of the squad are armed with the M27 IAR, which was originally adopted as a replacement for the M249 light machine gun and later also replaced M4 carbines and rifle platoons. But the company keeps a reserve of six M249s to issue to squads as needed. The Grenadier is also equipped with an M320 40mm grenade launcher employed in the standalone configuration, replacing the underbarrel M203s that were used by team leaders. The first big change for littoral combat teams specifically is moving from a three-team to a two-team structure. Each team will have six marines, and the squad leader will also have an assistant squad leader. This is not the first time the marines have had a two-team structure. In the 1980s, some marine units were converted to squads with two teams of five men each. However, this was short-lived and mostly to do with manpower cuts. More relevant, perhaps, would be the experiences of Marines during Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. Given units are usually under strength to varying degrees, running three fire teams is not always feasible, so in the field, a squad that's down to nine or ten Marines would often be reorganized into two fire teams, with the squad leader directly controlling one team and the other being controlled by a senior corporal or lance corporal. In line with this specific unit's focus on maritime reconnaissance and independence of action, there's an unmistakable similarity with marine reconnaissance teams, which provide special recon capabilities to marine divisions and larger air-ground task forces. Recon teams have six marines, with a team leader, assistant team leader, and four reconnaissance marines with varying specialities. Back in the 90s, the organization placed a sergeant as team leader and a corporal as an assistant, but I've been told by one recon marine that a staff sergeant team leader is more realistic. The rationale for six marines per team is to have them be more capable of independently defending themselves and covering a wide area. 
It also somewhat improves the squad leader's span of control, since they'll only have two subordinate team leaders and could potentially split command of the main and supporting effort with the assistant. The Marines were actually the odd ones out with three fire teams originally. The only other three team squads that immediately come to mind are the Finns, Vietnamese, Chinese before the 2010s, and the Australians before 2008. So even though there are doctrinal reasons why three teams could be preferable, it's not the end of the world. Span of control problems are especially heightened during Operations in the Jungle, which is home turf for the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force. Being able to better control two team leaders during jungle ops was cited as a benefit, as was making it easier to split a squad between two rubber boats. But the span of control of the team leaders will also increase from three to five subordinates. With this in mind, the ranks of enlisted leadership positions will also be increasing. Team leaders will become sergeants and squad leaders staff sergeants. At the platoon level, platoon sergeants who are currently staff sergeants may go up to gunnery sergeant while company gunnies will become master sergeants. So sergeants that previously oversaw 12 marines and directly controlled 3 team leaders will now oversee just 5 marines. In terms of echelons, this is essentially what the army does now with its NCOs. However, the reason the army has staff sergeant squad leaders dates back to the middle of World War II. In order to raise morale and give a pay raise to combat veterans across the whole force, in the lead up to D-Day, the army bumped up the rank of its leaders by one with no other substantive change. The Marines' plan is more like when the Marines promoted squad leaders from corporals to sergeants earlier in the war, to increase the experience and skills of junior NCOs leading increasingly complex small units. This came just a year before fire teams were introduced. In the near future, squad leaders will also have more potential weapons to be proficient in controlling. They want to push joint fire observer qualification down to the squad as a duty of assistant squad leaders, basically extending the vision of artillery observers and air attack controllers. Small drones and vehicle-launched loitering munitions may become available to squads, and recoilless rifles originally operated by weapons platoons will become optional squad weapons as a few examples. It's believed that the more dispersed operations, coupled with more complex technology, will require more experienced leadership, as Marines can become sergeants in as few as five to six years. However, the Task and Purpose article wasn't super critical of the concept either, and by critical I don't just mean bashing it, I mean weighing the downsides of a six-man team. Obviously recon marines seem to be doing okay with a six-man team, those teams are still fairly large when compared to other fire team precedent, but attrition always has to be taken into account. If a squad is down two, three, or four marines for whatever reason, even unrelated to combat, a team of six can still function as a team of three to five. But with a squad based on three smaller teams, it might be more worthwhile to disband a team instead. I just want to thank all my patrons who keep Battle Order going. They really give me that extra level of job security that makes YouTube less risky, so if you want to support us, consider joining them at the link in the description. And if you like this video, check out our earlier video on the complete history of the modern Marine Corps Rifle Squad. We'll see you over there.